Good afternoon. Welcome to the first ever edition of Good Morning Cup. I'm your host, Dubois. Um, host of the standard, you know the deal. We out here on the YouTube channel. Um, uh, this is gonna be a little different format. This is just gonna start from there. Uh, how can I how can I put this? We're gonna expand the content. We're gonna expand the conversation. You know, I'm gonna I'm trying to have more interaction. So we're gonna work on that interaction as far as people coming on board and um joining or calling and a bunch of other things. Um, and yes, I did call the show your morning cup because. What I'm going to be doing is I'm recording early in the daytime, I'm getting it out, pushing it out early in the morning. Hopefully, everybody gets to uh, see it. You know, you know, like that, that heavy traffic in the daytime. You know, in the morning, that's when people want to hear that new stuff, the news, it's breaking. And you know, my old ass gets up early anyway. I'm an early bird, so I'm gonna start uh, this new uh, platform. We're gonna call it the, uh, your morning cup because. That's what it is. It's your cup. You know, we can have everything on the table. And if I didn't bring it to the table, you guys bring it. So let's talk about it. Rational conversation, rational um content. Okay. Now, um, let's go start it off. Well, it, it's been a real, it's been to me, it's been a real tough week. I think for everyone. You know, here we are in um month what, seven of the pandemic. You know, we've been through so many phases here, there. We've all been through a lot. We've all lost people, almost all of us, at least the people I know. As a matter of fact, I was at a, I was at um a family uh member's funeral yesterday, a young man, you know, who's taken from us early. Rest in peace to Deshaun. Um, and speaking of being taken from us early, rest in peace to Chadwick Bozeman, um the Black Panther star. Um Chadwick, the Black Panther star, and um, also Chadwick played Jackie Robinson. And it's funny because today is um, anyway. Um, Chadwick, as you can see, he played Jackie um, Robinson in the movie Forty Two. Um, very influential, of course, um, the Black Panther actor, um, and uh, amongst um, numerous other roles, Mr. Bozeman played. Um, he passed at the age of 42, coincidentally, um, of colon cancer. You know, he had his disease, um, pri- kept it privately. None of us knew. Shocking news came down yesterday. And in hindsight, looking at him, and um, his Luke is Black, his co-star, having some nice words for him. Proud to work with Chad and share the screen with him. I learned, I learned from his hard work ethic that was filled with passion and energy. I'm praying for him and his family. May God comfort his family and friends. Chadwick Bozeman, air fighter. Rest in peace, Bozeman. 42 is amazing. It's funny, they're all wearing 42 today in the major leagues. And um, so much going on. Um, like I said, the week was crazy. Hurricane Laura swept through the um the Gulf of Mexico upwards through the mid of uh, the middle of our country. And then um Oh man, the RNC convention popped off, and you know the political um firestorm that precedes that, and 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 went on during the time. So as we head to uh, uh, big time election November, and um, like I said, we lost Chadwick, we lost Cliff Robinson, Portland Trailblazers, Yukon Huskies, the original six man, Cliff Robinson, his Chadwick again, you know, Children's Hospital, Chadwick, good guy, man. You know, we lost the blood one. And um, like I said, we lost Clifford Robinson from the Portland Trailblazers, the legendary um, sixth man. Um, Cliff Walking Bucket, I uh, posted Rex Chapman's comments about him on my Facebook page, the W. Dubois Facebook page. And, um, you know, fans of that, you know, the deal with Cliff, the headband, the original headband man, at least um, for our generation, my generation, the 30, the 30, uh, 32 and up cool. I said, I'm not 32. You ain't dying see Cliff. But, you know, maybe I did. Tell me in the comments. But anyway, um, rest in peace, Cliff Robinson. That came down today. Man, that's been a lot of darkness, man. You know, and there's so much negativity in the news. It's just so tiring. These, these debates where people are just going and running in 360 degrees, not understanding others, you know. Um, I, I'm watching, um, before I get to, uh, 
I was watching um I was watching um Dominic Smith of Mets crying on TV. And you know, this all stemmed from the uh, Wisconsin situation. This all stems from the Wisconsin situation and um and the uprest following um the shootings in Kenosha. And uh, you know, where we said like saw this young this young man shot in the back by the police, you know, look like it truly looked so traumatic, it was so excessive excessive. I mean, but there's still people gonna argue, and then you got a guy like Dominic Smith, big league ball player, black ball player, who's crying on TV and broke my home at Dom, you know, you watch people watch you cry, and a lot of people don't care. The people who already care, who already care, they didn't want to see your tears, bro, it hurt. And then the people who don't care, they loved it. And we're in a tough time and I don't think being sad and telling people you hurt me matters. I don't think people give a damn. <laughs> people laugh. People love that, man. People eat up your pain, man. They'll munch it. And I watched Dom cry. It was tough. But uh, let me see if I can find a Dom video. Let me see if I can find a Dom video. Sorry, guys. You know, I'm working on this mirroring thing. And um, let me go to Twitter real quick. The truth. Here we go. Just listen to that. You know, what has been the most part about, whether it's today or just even the past two months, what has been most I had to watch that. I'm sorry, I can watch it. Most of it. Tough. Um, I mean, I think the most difficult part is to see, like, people still don't care. And for, for this, it's continuously happening. I mean, it just shows um, just the hate of people's heart. And, I mean... I mean, that, that just sucks, you know? Yeah. And being a black man in America, it's, it's not easy. So, I mean, like I said, you know, I, I just, I wasn't there today, but I'll, I'll bounce back. I'll be fine. Yeah, man, again, tough to watch, you know, but it was genuine. It was from the heart of a ball player. You know, this guy gives a lot back to the community. He's always around, so. Um, you know, and Met fans like him a lot. A lot of Met fans, you know, a lot of white Met fans love Dom Smith. And you see a guy like that, like, hurt, like maybe, you know, maybe to wake up some people up, maybe. Hey, well, maybe this might be like, hey, shut the hell up. You go play baseball. You know, that's how people feel. That's how people feel. But you can't be crying, though. My opinion, man. So, um, well, I mean, uh, so now, as we go back in, and it's with my friend. Twitter, my friend. Yeah, I guess not. There it goes. We have the um, the NBA is going to resume today, three thirty. Um, after the two day, three day bo uh, boycott or strike, whatever you want to call it, after um, the police shooting in Kenosha, where um, the young father of three was left paralyzed, Mr. Blake. Um. It's a tough spot. Like, everyone has an opinion. And I noticed that a lot of people don't like the middle ground, you know, because, you know, you got, you'll have guys say, yeah, you know, these athletes, you know, they make all this money. Da, da, da. Yeah. These athletes didn't always have this money. Most of them didn't. And most of them are not uh, sons of ball players or have generally come from generational wealth like a lot of other people. What happens is these people are from the same neighborhoods that I'm from or, or other people of color from or black people in, or poor people, you know, because it transcends race too. This movement has transcended race. And uh, so it hurts, you know, you're playing ball, you're entertaining people. And when they play ball, it makes everyone forget about what they saw. And they kind of are um, helping uh, throw the stuff under the rug by playing. That's how they feel. They feel guilty. And they, you know, I mean, I don't know how everyone feels, but I would imagine you know, so they feel like they have to do something, but at the same time, 
you know what runs, you know cash rules everything around us, right? You know cream is the, the end of the day, bro. I don't care what anyone says, and that's another thing that transcends race. It's that one color, it's that green. So people, you know, it's, and the NBA has a lot of uh, power, and they do a lot of social justice, but they don't have that, that um, and they don't have, they're not the, they, they're not the NFL is what I'm saying. The NFL is probably, first of all, the NFL, out of 50, the 50 top rated shows last year on television, the NFL had 42 of those slots. It was a game, 42 to one NFL game. Out of the 50 rated the highest shows on TV last year, all of TV, 42 of those 50 slots were NFL games. The NFL creates money. They print money. You understand? You know? Go down a little bit. Let me see the next story. So the NFL, they print money. And um, it's, it's a sport that America can't leave alone. You know, after the Kaepernick situation, you um you have some people on different sides of the spectrum not or or claiming that they're gonna boycott and not watch for their different reason. One, oh you guys let this guy kneel, I'm not watching to disgrace. Ah, oh, they don't want to watch. Then you have the other side, you boycott a cat, we're not messing with you no more. You guys have done nothing, we're not we're not watching anymore. And both sides, you go to the internet, you see people say it all the time, but the ratings have not dipped tremendously. And the ratings have dipped at all is because of all these great streaming services that, like I enjoy because I'm not I don't use that cable. So you're not gonna see the Nielsen ratings when I'm watching, because I'm watching everything on a seven second delay on a stream. You know? So that's a lot that's a lot of the reasons ratings are down, huh? Because of cap or because of a boycott or because of political people want to see the car wreck, and the NFL provides that to you on every single play. It's the American way. Your morning cup, baby. This is the first one. I'm excited, man, because I wanted to get away. You know, I'm still talking about little sports, but, you know, like I said, the relevancy. I'm not going to be talking about individual games, you know. I went Maddie B on Epis. Me and Maddie every Sunday. Tomorrow we're going to the Bronx. We're going to do it with the great Steve Adorno, and we're going to put some masterpiece together. We're going to talk about that sports all day. We're going to be on Podbean. I'm going to keep pushing that, the Epis Sports radio page. For some reason, my standard page on FB they said I um, violated community guidelines. I'm like, what the hell did I say? I didn't even say anything. Why are those post sports stuff on there? Hey, well, let me back in. Man. I don't know what's up with this dude Zuckerberg, man. You know, man, I got some shares with dude, man. But I'm Zuckerberg, man. You know, a little funny guy. You know, a little funny guy. A little curly hair funny dude, man. Anyway. Yeah, man. So the ratings... The NFL, if the NFL was behaving, or sorry, not behaving, but moving, the players were moving the way the NBA did, it would be crazy. Because the NBA, the NBA doesn't have that fan base the NFL does. The NFL touches everybody. There's a lot of white guys, you know, in, 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 in Eastern Long Island who don't give a damn about the NBA. Let's be frank, and they'll tell you. I haven't watched since Bird play or Joy. Don't watch it. You guys are babies. Blah, blah, blah. You, come on. Let's be real. You have other guys. Kids, sports fans, but a lot of guys don't watch the NBA. A lot of brothers watch the NBA. And then, you know, baseball has their own thing. They always have their local niche. They do their thing. But the NFL, everyone comes. Everyone shows, including me, man. So, you know, I'm not mad at the players. So, you know, it's kind of funny to people. Ha, 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 two-day boycott. But, you know, they got some things done. As you can see in this Kyle Griffin um, New York Times article, this tweet in the New York Times after the, um, the Jacob Blake situation, um, you see they um they got uh where they're gonna use the arenas to um become voting facilities. So it's gonna give people more access and, and it'll curb a little bit of voter suppression and um maybe give more people opportunity to vote because those facilities can can hold a lot of people, you do a lot of things in the time. We're talking about the NBA arenas, we're talking about the Barclays, we're talking about the Amway Center, we're talking about Arco, we're talking about NBA uh, Staples in LA, we're talking about United Center, they're gonna all be turned into voting areas. So that's good. Um, they also said they got commitments from 30 billionaires to um, give something in the future to help promote um, social change and, um, and what have you. Let me get more stuff, you brothers and sisters are asking for. Okay. Come on, Dominic, man. That hurt me, Dom. I like Dom, though, man. I'm glad he's on the Mets and all. I mean, I'm gonna get, you know, people know I like this. I like watching them. I like 
covering them, taking pictures of them. They're fascinating bull club. They're an origin story. And um, it is going to take us into this. Sporting Ben Wagner from New York. Right. Sorry, guys. Let me start with So, um, I'm sorry about the bike. Yeah, baby, you see, you know, this is a raw show, you know? And what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, it's gonna get better and better, but it's raw, man, so, anyway. Brody, you know, um, ladies and gentlemen, Brody Van Wagen, the um, general manager of the New York Mets. And once again, this goes, the relevancy of this, it, 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 oh, man, you guys are killing me! I can't close the window from here, all right? Y'all gonna be like, yo, this dude right here is melting in there. Y'all gonna watch me melt on YouTube if I close the window. So we're gonna have to um, bear with me and hear and, um, and the sounds of Brooklyn, East New York, Brooklyn. We're gonna have to uh, work with me on that. It's a little muggy day. It looks like the sun trying to bust out. So. Your morning cup, baby. All right, you know, you can also check me. I'm gonna be on Epic Sports Radio, Podbean, um, Spotify, with my boy Maddie B, my homie. And um, we'll be up, we'll be in the Bronx tomorrow recording, and hopefully that'll be out Monday, Tuesday. I think it'll be out Monday because we're gonna be with the master. We're gonna be in the booth with him, with Steve. So usually we'll do it in Queens, and we send the joint to um, Steve, and Steve mix and match it and do his thing. But we're gonna be privileged to be there with him in the um, in the dojo. And so speak. So now Brody. So Brody, um, after um the NBA players walk off, the NBA has been leading the um charge with all of these um boycotts and um social demands and what have you while while using their um platform you know to do that so after the nba players walk off the nhl suspended games and mlb was playing while the boycott started so they guys at the late games they they didn't play they didn't play seattle didn't play the mets didn't play on friday that's what was the dumb situation they didn't play uh what was it thursday it was thursday they didn't play they got the double header with the yankees they're on right now I need to tune in on that as soon as we're out of here. Um, but so Brody, as you saw in the video, you know, he was saying that because they were planning what we're gonna do, what we're gonna boycott. The Mets didn't know what they wanted to do, what they're gonna not show. So Brody was saying how the owner, Mr. Wilpon, Jeff Wilpon, told him, listen, let's come, let's just come out, then walk off the field, and then come back an hour later. And that'll be, you know, that'll be the boycott. And he was like, yo, for an hour? You know, he said, yeah, we make the game late, we'll make a statement. So Jeff wanted to play that day. I'm not sure, but, and he said, where'd you get that from? He said, yeah, Rob said that. He's talking about the commission. And when we go over now, we talk about Rob Manfred. Listen, I'm going to make a, a video, a standard. I'm going to make, like, when I do the standards, I'm going to do documentaries, like, or, or, or biographies about people, like the craft one. So I'm going to do one of the Will Ponds, because they're connected to Bernie Madoff, Bernie Fan, connected to gangster shit. So, like I said, we're going to expand the, um, the whole platform. We're gonna talk about different stuff. I'm gonna show you guys and then later on we get into the show. Um, long story short, see Rob Manfred, the commissioner of the MLB, he's very tone deaf. He's clueless. The players hate him, everyone hates him but the owners, because he is the ultimate commissioner as far as the owners are concerned. He's a puppet. They can do what they want with him. Um, the Will Ponds are very close with him. He's um He's the one who helped stop the sale of the Mets to Stephen Cole. For whatever reason, they don't like Stephen Cole. Manfred is on the Wilcon side. And if you're on the Wilcon side, the Met fans don't like you. Nobody likes Manfred. The Met fans hate him. The whole baseball hates him. The players hate him. 
go to the championship a piece of tin or a piece of iron. You're in the it's just see the guy's just you're in the Astros stand over. Like I said, we're gonna get into him and um we're not gonna stay too much longer on it. We're gonna get out of here this first year of cup, morning cup. Um, you know, we're gonna do these shows, so we're gonna talk about topics, they're gonna be reoccurring topics, or you know, and uh and uh you know, certain things don't go um don't go away. Like, you know, I like the first real morning cup is, is a week and a half, two weeks after the mega Tory situation, but we're gonna get into that later too, because that's not over either. Because they still not there's still people like Tory ain't saying nothing, we got charges. So like I said, the morning cup, we're gonna get diverse, we're gonna talk about a lot of broad things. Sports, pop culture, um entertainment, um tomfoolery, you know what I'm saying? Um whatever. So um moving on, what else do I have here? Oh, yeah, man, man, crazy, the NFL, right, 42 of the 50 top TV shows in the United States television were NFL games, but that's crazy, man, they got so much power, they're probably the most single powerful entity in the um, corporation in the U.S. because of their influence, because not only do they have the money, they have that influence, that public influence, you know? It's not a quiet bill, quiet thing like, you know, like Buffett's farms and, and whatnot. It's, it's bigger than that. It's huge. And um, people want it. They need it. It's like, uh, they want to see the NFL. Some people are like, nah, they don't need that crap. You probably do don't. Because there's like 10 other guys who want it. You know? So. Finally, my favorite situation. The Tom Fooler, the drama, the shade room, not type nonsense. You know, I hate the shade room, but you know, it is what it is. Um, after the RNC, you had um Miss Lorraine, Congresswoman Women, uh Congresswoman Lorraine. She said, uh, well, actually it was um, Bridget Gabriel. She said Cardi B is a terrible role model for young women today. Why would Joe Biden give one of his rare interviews to someone like that? And then Lorraine comes in behind that and um doubles down. The fact that Cardi B is degrading. And posing these kinds of pictures, they tell you everything you should need to know. They call her a terrible role model, and these are the pics she's talking about. Cardi B went ahead and, and posted new pics, the, uh, the famous new pics of the first lady. And she said, after after Lorraine says America needs more women like Cardi B, or like uh, Melania Trump, and far less Cardi B's, you know Cardi kills her. Then she used to sell that wop. <laughs> she's so BX, man. Like, I don't know, man. She, yo, Cardi crazy, man. Then she said, this pic is giving me, yeah, you effing with some wet ass kitty vibes. Just saying, you know, listen, let me tell you guys something. You're always going to know who likes what you like or who is experienced with what you're experienced with. If you like pool, you're going to run into guys who like pool. You're going to be around people who like pool. If you like bird watching, you're going to run people like bird watching. If you like to smoke weed, you're going to see the weed heads. You're going to find the weed heads. You just got magnetized to each other. Strippers know each other. They look in each other's eyes. Strippers and sex workers and all that stuff. You just say, oh, yeah, she's a freak. She's a freak. Cardi B saw, the, saw what she saw, and she called the spade a spade. Melanie, you know, that's the only first lady who's, who's, who's yamps you've ever seen. She don't, that only first lady who's yamps you've ever seen. So with that, Cardi, we salute you. You know, we're going to give you that first toast to your morning cup. We'll close the show out, man. Yo, listen. My boy Rich, you know, you know, I always Richard in VA. I always um give you a hard time on Twitter what you say stuff. I'm always on your butt, yo. You always show me love. Bro. I appreciate you, and I appreciate um how you never take anything too to the heart, you know. And I I like people like that. I could talk real to them, and I and you can do that to me. You guys all can. It's nothing to me, you know. I've seen it all, man. You know, the only thing I only seen is the is the six foot hole. You know, I'm not rushing to that. So thank you guys. Your morning cup. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, sorry, W. Dubois. Yo, I gotta get used to that, man. My head, man. Like Ron, we call himself Ron Artest still sometimes. See you guys. Listen, we playing music in between the breaks here, so you know beats, all that stuff. Send it to me. We're gonna put it on the show, cause you know you can't, you know, all that trademark copyright stuff. I can't do all stuff. I'd rather use beats from the hood and, and the neighborhood. And well, you want the cup? You know, I'm gonna be on on Epis. Maddie B tomorrow, Steve, and I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the Yo Money Cup before I head up to the Bronx. So see you guys tomorrow.